On today's show, Ford gives white van man a plug, the 2022 BMW iX SUV is revealed, and a Kiwi company could be the homegrown saviour for hundreds of thousands of Nissan Leaf owners around the world wanting a new battery pack for their cars. These stories and more coming next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only carbon zero certified renewable electricity company. We are 100% Kiwi and we're 50% community owned. Why not switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another weekend roundup. I had an amazing week and I hope you had one too. So let's get to the news. After more than 55 years of production, Ford's famous transit van is getting an all electric variant for the 2022 model year. After more than 55 years of production, Ford's famous transit van is getting an all-electric variant for the 2022 model year. Revealed mid-week, the all-electric e-transit, which will be sold globally, is the next logical step for the transit brand after it was given a plug-in hybrid variant in Europe last year. Powered by a 67 kilowatt hour battery pack and offering up to 110 kilowatts of DC quick charging, the e-transit has come under criticism already from some electric vehicle fans for its mediocre range, just 126 miles, 202 kilometers in its most aerodynamic form on the US EPA test cycle. But as Ford has reiterated in both of its press events and emails to us since, it's designed the e-transit to be an affordable electric vehicle that fits the majority of the use case scenarios of its customers, many of whom would just not go electric if it costs more to buy. As I'm sure you know, there's been quite a lot of competition among automakers and technology companies when it comes to self-driving prowess. And with things changing almost daily, it is hard to keep track of who is doing what. I mean, just this week, GM's cruise automation signed a deal with Walmart in the US to operate a test fleet of driverless grocery delivery vehicles. But today we're focusing on something else, namely the rivalry between Waymo and Tesla over whose autonomous driving system is the best. In the past, Tesla CEO Elon Musk has criticized the way Waymo has developed its system, and this week, Waymo responded to a Twitter question about if it felt its technology is orders of magnitude more advanced than, quote, the more vocal competitor with misleading branding. It simply replied, yes, but for context, we should remember that both systems operate very differently to one another in different situations, making it hard to compare them. It started life as the BMW i Next, and this week it was revealed in production form as the 2022 BMW iX electric SUV. With a design that some of you may find particularly ugly, complete with now customary oversized pig nose kidney grille, the iX is stylistically a cross between the X5 and the BMW i3, yet it sits about the same height as the X6. It offers an estimated range of, quote, more than 300 miles, that's 482 kilometers, on the EPA test cycle, and it can do the stoplight sprint in, quote, under five seconds. BMW says it will have a 200 kilowatt DC quick charging capability, meaning a relatively short recharge time on the road. Inside, the iX is like no other BMW SUV I've seen, with a single piece dash and a head up display. Not sure I like the covered dash, but I'm not likely to ever buy one, so I'll let those who do be the ones to pass judgment. If you are a regular here, You'll know that I love motorcycles, and last year I was lucky enough to get my hands on an Energica SA SE9, putting it through its paces in a review that you can see here. But this week, following previous improvements in range and specs for the same, as well as a lower-priced, lower-range option, Energica announced a new high-end variant for all of its motorcycles. Built using its experiences in the Moto E race series, the Ego, Eva Rebel, and Eva SASA 9 all get a new RS variant that offers a sprint time of 2.6 seconds, making them even more powerful on the road or the track. And in case you were wondering, that means that the Energica's range is now as quick off the line as the Kawasaki Ninja H2, the BMW S1000RR, the KTM 1290 Super Duke, and the Honda Fireblade. I cannot wait to try one out. Sticking with two wheels, BMW Motorrad showed off a new concept ride this week that's not only an evolution from the popular C-Evolution Maxi scooter, but is decidedly cyberpunk in its design. I give you the definition CE04. 
Of course, at this point, it is only a concept vehicle, and it's one that's designed for urban use rather than cruising or adventure riding. Consequently, it's got a massive centre console screen, which BMW says is the largest ever put on a two-wheeler. And while it does follow the standard underbone scooter design ethos, it isn't quite a step through. As with most scooters, there is a lockable storage area under the seat, but because there's no fuel tank there, which is where it lives in most underbone scooters, there's enough space to store a crash helmet. I'm not sure if I like the design or not, and frankly, if you look at it right, it creates a bit of a Sinclair C5 vibe. What do you think? Hyundai surprised everyone this week with a refresh to the design of its Kona Electric, deleting the front faux grille and making the front end a lot smoother. To go with that new front end, there is of course a new headlight design that's narrower and more in keeping with the headlights found on the Hyundai Nexo FCV. And Hyundai says the car is now 25 millimeters longer than last year's model. That's a Nats whisker under one inch. Inside, there's a new interior with updated displays and connectivity, as well as a new driver assistance suite that includes leading vehicle departure alert, safe exit warning, blind spot collision avoidance assist, rear cross traffic collision assist, and a rear seat alert. Battery pack options and range do remain the same. I checked Hyundai's US website and it makes no mention of the upgrade, so only Hyundai Europe seems to be promoting this new look so far. I guess we'll wait and find out. As you might know, BMW has been rolling out the iX3 for a couple of weeks now, with sales starting in both Europe and China, the latter being where the iX3 is made. We already know it won't be heading to North America, thanks to US dealers complaining about the iX3's range not being enough for US customers. But this week we learned via Gascu that BMW Brilliance Automotive, that's the company that's making the iX3 in China, will only be exporting 1,600 iX3s to Europe by the end of this year with a total quota for European customers next year only being 12,000 cars, which of course is equivalent to just 1,000 cars for the entire European market per month. This not only disappoints, but suggests that BMW is going to treat the iX3 as a niche market vehicle. I can't say I'm surprised, but I am most certainly disappointed. Following a NHTSA investigation and continued evidence of failures in customers' cars, Tesla has extended its warranty program for owners of pre-2018 Model S and Model X cars to rectify a design flaw with the car's MCU touchscreen display that would leave the touchscreen slow to respond, fail to respond, or completely turn off. This problem is well documented and stems from the embedded Multimedia Card Memory, or eMMC, that this particular generation of Teslas had. While Tesla had previously charged some owners whose cars were out of warranties to both diagnose and replace the screens, Tesla has now acknowledged that there is an issue and says it will replace the screens free of charge if there's a failure on cars that are less than eight years old and have less than 100,000 miles on the clock. It will also reimburse owners who had previously been asked to pay for a replacement. Owners of first-generation Nissan Leafs, as well as some ENV200 owners, have been getting increasingly worried recently thanks to Nissan's total lack of interest in providing them with a decent, long-lasting, affordable replacement for the flawed battery pack design in their vehicles. We've covered stories before of owners getting quotes into the tens of thousands just to keep their Leafs on the road, but this week, New Zealand-based firm Blue Cars announced a brand new crowdfunding campaign to help its replacement Leaf battery product get to market. It's been working on a replacement battery pack for a number of years using a totally new battery cell design, which marks it apart from other aftermarket battery options for the Leaf, and it's been partly funded by the New Zealand Low Emission Vehicles Contest fund. It says its batteries offer 58% more capacity at 38 kilowatt hours than the original Leaf Pack, and its first prototype vehicle is already undergoing testing. It is so great to see a New Zealand company at the heart of a drive towards keeping those early electric cars out of the scrapyard. Reduce, reuse, recycle, and get New Zealand plugging in. Oregonian electric automaker Archimoto has been busy in the last few months increasing production of its FUV, 
or fun utility vehicle. Designed to accommodate two people, or one person and a cargo space, the FUV and all of its variants have come to date with a roll cage, a roof, and, so you wish, optional doors. But this week, the firm showcased its new concept vehicle, the FUV Roadster. Essentially an FUV without a roll cage, windscreen, or roof, this concept is a 2 plus 1 trike that looks very much like any other motorcycle 2 plus 1 trike out there. And frankly, I actually prefer the look of it than the original Arkimoto FUV. The company is asking fans what they think, and I'm guessing feedback will ultimately influence it if it makes it into production or not. You would, of course, have to wear a helmet in most markets to ride one, but I don't think that's a major blocker, do you? And finally, since COVID-19 became a widespread thing around the world, Tesla CEO Elon Musk has voiced some pretty controversial ideas about it. These included voicing early on that he thought the number of new cases in the US would fall, quote, probably close to zero by the end of April, and complaining bitterly about local emergency ordinances that were forcing factory closures at Tesla's Fremont facility. On the flip side, though, Tesla has also worked on its own ventilator design, and this week, Musk said a vaccine printer it's developed with biotech firm CureVac is, quote, going to be an important product for the world. However, this week, Musk also became ill and took a rapid COVID-19 antigen chest from BD. Not once, but four times. The results were split, two positive and two negative, leading Musk to take to Twitter and call in question the test results and national COVID statistics. However, as the FDA has stated many times, these new rapid tests do have a fairly high possibility of false positives, and antigen test positivity usually means getting a more accurate test. Regardless, I hope Elon feels better very soon, and if you are someone who thinks you may have COVID, please do follow the advice of your local medical professionals. And on that note, we are done for the day. Make sure you hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on our next episode. And if you haven't switched yet, why not switch to New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company? It is super easy to make the switch. And when you do, you'll be helping New Zealand wean itself off dirty energy and onto clean green power that will keep the land beautiful for many generations to come. I'll be back with more great content for you next week. But until then, please do stay safe. Remember to wash your hands and keep yourself healthy. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite. See you next time. Bye.